This is the Fearless Agent Podcast, where you learn how to make way more money fast selling real estate with your host, the fearless agent himself, Bob Leffler. And good day to you. This is Bob here at the Fearless Agent Podcast for real estate sales professionals like you, where we explain that everything, everything you've been taught by the real estate industry is dead wrong and you will make lots more, way more money in way less time by doing the exact opposite. I'm joined by my guest host today, the lovely and talented Patty Crowley. How are you, Patty? I'm doing well today, Bob. You were a world-famous realtor at one point, weren't you? Yes, I was. Okay, there you go. (laughs) So today's topic uh, is, of course, as always, how to make way more money. And I just want to talk a little bit about prospecting. Is that a good topic, Patty? It's a great topic. You like prospecting, don't you? Well, nobody really likes it. Well, you you know what the problem is with prospecting? People don't like to do it because they've been taught the exact wrong words to say. Mm -hmm. And most of the coaches and trainers out there, they teach you these words and you think, would they even say those words? I would not feel comfortable saying those words. And then it keeps you from prospecting. And then the other thing is you're praying to God that nobody says yes because then you're going to go over and choke because you don't have the right presentation. So we teach you five presentations that all fearless agent coaching students learn, which is the fearless agent listing presentation uh, pricing presentation, for sale by owner presentation, uh, buyer presentation, and investor presentation. So no matter what kind of trouble you get yourself into by prospecting, you will know exactly the right words to say when you get there and make it easy to get people to sign pieces of paper that turn into money for you and your clients. So uh, – one one part of this is just the mindset of prospecting. I think that's what people tend to get wrong is they're they're worried about what somebody might think. So imagine that I'm cold calling, let's say, and I, I hear people say this. Well, you know, I don't. You know, they, I'm bothering the people. I'm bothering them. And what if they hang up on me or something like that? So if you were if you were cold calling up and down the street asking people if they want to sell their house. Uh, you know, a percentage of them. In fact, if you look in your neighborhood, let's say you have a hundred houses in your neighborhood, there's probably somewhere between two and six for sale signs up right now. If you live in a single family home neighborhood, and that tells you that at, of every 100 messages you leave, they're falling on the ears of you know at least two to two or so people that are thinking of selling their house right now, and that many at least would be thinking the same thing in three months or six months or down the road. So that's why we do telephone prospecting. So I want you to imagine this. Imagine that I called you. I'm just going to call you, Patty. We'll do a little role play. Would oh, you like to do a little role play? Oh, it would be my pleasure. Okay. <laughs> right. And and this time, <laughs> no costumes. Okay. Okay. So I if I know. called you up and you were a seller and I said, uh, hi, Patty. Uh, is this Patty? Yes, this is Patty. Hi, Patty. My name is Bob Leffler, and I'm a real estate agent with an outfit called Fearless Agent Realty. And you don't know me, but uh, I just walked outside of a restaurant, and I found your wallet on the ground. And by the way, all your credit cards are still in it. All your money is still in it. And by the way, Patty, did I catch you at a bad time, or do you have just a minute to talk to me? <laughs> I think I've got a minute. To oh talk yeah, to you me. got all the time in the all world, the don't you, Patty? Because I you got your mo- my that's money. something <laughs> you want. That's right. So when people hang up on you quickly uh, when you're telephone prospecting, they're doing you a favor because time. When Patty's prospecting, time is the only th- resource she's got, and you want to protect that time. And if you're prospecting using the fearless agent words, you're making $400 an hour minimum. So uh, if they hang up on you, you can assume that you don't have anything they want. And sure. if or if they're nice and they quickly rush you off the phone, it's because you don't have anything they want. But I will tell you this. If you cold call somebody and say, hi, I was just calling to see if you might be thinking of selling your house. And Patty is thinking about selling her house. She will engage with me unless she's just caught her at a bad time or something like that. But she will be willing to engage with me. So here's one of the the mindset pieces of of fearless agent. First of all, 
all the people that you're going to end up doing business with in the future, in fact, all the people that you've done business with successfully in the past as a real estate agent, if you're not brand new, they were nice, they were sane, they were smart, they probably had a ton of equity to pay you with, and they were deadly serious about selling their house right now at fair market value. So if you just write those things down, nice, sane, smart, tons of equity to pay you with, deadly serious about selling their house right now at fair market value, those are the people that have paid you. And there probably were some people who did pay you, but it wasn't worth it to put up with their nonsense because one of those uh, things weren't in place. Maybe they were – they were. so if the people who are – not nice, not sane, not smart, uh, they're very likely not going to pay you anyway, so you don't want to worry about what they think of you when you're, when you're prospecting. So I have a little sign in front of my desk on the wall. It says, it is not my job to make crazy people sane, stupid people smart, and mean people nice, but it is my job to find nice, sane, smart people and do business with them. So... When you're, I, I always say that you know, never care what they think, never care what they do, never care what they say. You should care what you say, what you think, and what you do. You should be nice. You should be smart. You should be sane. Always be polite, even when they're not polite to you. And remember, the nicest people in the world have a bad day, and you happen to catch them on on their bad day when you were prospecting. So. That's kind of the mindset for for prospecting, and you know, there's a book that I like by Michael Gerber, uh, which somebody told me. Have you ever read the E Myth by I Michael Gerber? I have it though. I okay, she has it. it. She has yeah. books. She's never read a book, but she does watch TV. So if it ever comes out on <laughs> TV, know. she'll be watching it. If if the E Myth turns into a reality show, <laughs> but the E stands for entrepreneurial, and he tells the story about this lady who. Uh, opens up a pie. She, she bakes these fantastic pies. Everybody's telling her how great her pies are. And then she uh, is convinced to open up a pie sh- shop. Six months later, she wants to take her own life. It's a nightmare. And it's because she hasn't learned the systems to uh, to be a successful business person in the pie business or any business for that matter. So, But he, he talks about in this book, and, and somebody told me that this is the best-selling business book of all time. I don't know if that's true, but it's, it's certainly one of them. But he talks about how every business has a uh, little metric that you measure or uh, some little thing. If you just get that one number right, you know, hopefully everything else would fall into place. And when it is when – when it is – when you're a realtor, what is that magic number? So imagine – that uh, it is your goal. And I, I don't like to give people a goal, but if you're brand new in real estate and, and you're surrounded by so much failure, you don't even know what's possible. But I would say in your first year as a fearless agent coaching student, you should be doing at least 40 listings per year. So just everybody write that down if you would. So 40 listings per year. Now, how many months are there in a realtor year? And the reality is there's 12 months in a human year, 52 weeks in a human year, but there's only 40 weeks and 10 months in a realtor year because, like, we're coming up on Christmas here at Mm -hmm. the time of this taping. And, uh, you know, Jesus was only born on one day, but we over-celebrate it by – even by his standards. And then Patty's birthday is a two-week extravaganza. Then I got to get her out of rehab or jail or something like that, you know, (laughs) for the third or fourth time. Then – you know, we have all these these office parties and all that stuff. And, you know, so there's stuff. So I think there's 10 months in a realtor's year. And if you do four listings per month, that would be one listing per week. And if you're going to get one listing per week, you're going to have to go on and get it at full commission for full term. Then you're going to have to go on three or let's say it this way. If you went on three listing appointments and you only got one, I would not be worried about you. You you might have better stats than that. Uh, but if you got one out of three on average, I would be happy for you, proud of you, not worried about you. And then in order to get to go on three, you're going to have to schedule five. So if you schedule five listing appointments a week, you can pretty much plan on two of them are going to cancel 
and then you're going to go on three and you'll get one. And if you do that every week uh, in the realtor year, you're going to do 40 transactions a year. And you can do the math on what your average sales price is and what your average commission will be. So the metric in Michael Gerber's book, he talked about a liquor store. And maybe their metric is gross sales per square foot monthly. Well, ours is number of listing appointments scheduled weekly. So if you schedule five, two cancel, go on three, get one, uh, and have no other goals, because the 40 is not going to happen unless you schedule five. The 10 uh, uh, months with four listings per month is not going to happen unless you schedule the five. You're not going to get to go on three unless you schedule the five. So it all starts with the five. So what should we be doing as our number one priority today uh, on a weekday? It should be scheduling five. So now I have actually scheduled five listing appointments in one day. I have had uh, coaching students of mine tell me that they've scheduled six in one day. I gave up after five. I said, hey, I've had it, right? But, you know, they're, they're, I guess they're motivated or something. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I've got coaching students that have scheduled nine in a week. But once you're scheduling five every week, you have to, you know, do a CMA, which stands for Country Music Awards okay. if you're new, uh, and then uh, – or do a little mini market analysis or something like that. So there is some planning and driving and schlepping and doing all that stuff and presenting. So five a week is all you're ever going to need to hit any level of success because then we have some advanced stuff that you can do to make even more money. So I would have – if you're new in real estate or you're – and you're just getting started, or if you're kind of fell off the wagon and you're getting restarted. You know, the most common story I hear in real estate when I'm on an introductory coaching call with somebody is I, with experienced agents, they've been in the business for 10, 15, sometimes 20 years, and they say, I was doing great, and then I became an REO agent during the uh, uh, not too recent unpleasantness. And then they lost their way, and now they don't know how to get back. The truth is, if they had just kept doing what got them successful in the first place and never got diverted their focus to some odd, niche, uh, market-dependent activities, then they would be fine. So secret number two is know how to get business. Now, I fly a lot, and uh, I only fly Southwest Airlines because – they do jokes. Have you ever noticed that? Uh, they Patty? do. When, when you fly Southwest, airline. they do jokes on the plane. In fact, they allowed me to do jokes on the plane, and that is a mistake mm-hmm. they will not soon repeat. I will tell you that. Yeah, I'm glad it wasn't So it didn't plane. go well. That's all I'm saying. But uh, <laughs> they have these in-flight magazines. Have you ever read the in-flight yes, magazine because you're bored out of your mind? Absolutely. And you don't want to listen to the people t- sitting next to you? And I do recommend the Bose noise-canceling headphones for that. The chatty person sitting next to you or the crying baby. Oh, wonderful invention. So I'm reading the in-flight magazine, and it says they always have these top ten. Women's magazines have this. I don't read too many, but you do. But they always have these top ten lists, top ten that. Well, in uh, the in-flight magazine, they had the top five least respected professions. Oh, boy. Yeah. Who Who do you think made the list? I'm sure we did. <laughs> realtors, I'm sure realtors really? Yeah, did. Yes. we were on the list. Now, who else would you guess, Patty, was on the list? Um, a car salesman. That's right. Yeah, that's one. Ding. Uh, a dentist, maybe. No, they no, were no. not on the list. Oddly, uh, who? attorneys. Attorneys were on the list, and if attorneys, by the way, hang around long enough, what do they always turn into? Oh, like a politician. Politicians, yes, right? Yes. That was on the list. Okay, so who was number one least <sighs> respected profession? We did it. Say we didn't. No, we we did did it. Yes, I'm sorry to say, realtors. Now I don't know uh, how accurate the research department, that crack team of savvy, motivated personnel down at the Mm -hmm. Spirit Magazine from uh, uh, you know Southwest Airlines is, but uh, I think it's fair to say that every living human in America has a friend, a relative, an acquaintance or they themselves were a miserable failure in real estate. So there's that, right? And obviously the for sale by owners don't think we're worth what we charge. By the way, did I ever tell you what my favorite top 10 list is? 
What's your favorite top ten? Top ten Amish pickup lines. <laughs> Have you ever heard those? No. Yeah, like, my, how that shapeless dra- black dress flatters thee. <laughs> or, dost thou come to these barn raisings often? Or, uh, really, Witness is my favorite movie, too. You didn't know that? You've been practicing yeah. these. Or, or, thy buggy certainly has a boss tuck and roll. Yeah, that's my, <laughs> I, I don't know, what's wrong with me? So, anyway, oh gosh. there's a lot of people out there that don't think we're worth what we charge. So wh- how are we going to fix that? And we're going to fix it by having the world's greatest value proposition. Okay. Now, before I tell you the world's greatest value proposition, the fearless agent one, I just want to say if any of what we talk about on this podcast makes sense to you and you happen to be earning less selling real estate than you wish you were, and you're open to the idea of having a little help with that. If you would like to learn more, always all you got to do is pick up the phone, call me anytime at 480-385-8810. Patty, will I answer the phone? He will answer the phone. I will not answer the phone, but I will call you back. Answer. No, you, I'll answer the phone. He does answer the phone. So that is my cell phone number. And let's just see if you and, you know, what you're trying to do and what we do, if it would even be a good fit. So, and by the way, if for whatever reason, our coaching is not a good fit for you, I will absolutely tell you that and we can uh, come up with some other plan for you. But I want you to call me at 480-385-8810. And I love talking to realtors. I don't want you to ever think you're bothering me. I don't have anything better to do than to make you rich. Please don't email me or text me. Always call me. This is about sales. Sales is about the phone. 480-385-8810. If you cannot afford coaching, But you wish you could. You can always visit fearlessagent.com and watch our free webinar. It's 45 minutes. Take lots of notes. Go to the video training page uh, and watch all the other training videos. And those free videos will be better coaching for free than you would pay any other coach in America any amount of money for. And if you ever have a question, again, you can always call me because we want to help you for free so that you can end up affording our coaching as soon as possible. And uh, we are here for you. So what is the best value proposition? So here's what is a value proposition. First of all, it's fancy corporate lingo for why should I even do business with you? It answers that question. And the answer is because I do business completely differently than all other real estate agents. And it virtually guarantees you of two things. One is that your house will sell, and the other is that you would end up with significantly more money, bottom line, after all the expenses are paid, than you could get any other way. Would you say that's definitely what you're looking for? So here's the good news. Everybody says yes to that, okay? So I teach a little thing called the either-or. All right. This is a key element of sales. Uh, I got two options for you, Patty. Would you like to fall naked into lava again? <laughs> she, she, she was drinking a little. Don't worry about it. Or or would you rather have a free trip to Disneyland? Uh, I'd like to go to Disneyland. Oh, a free trip to Disneyland. Okay. Yeah. See, everybody, nobody ever gets that wrong. So whenever you're you're offering options to people, make sure one of them is so good they're not going to turn that down. So the value proposition is I do business completely differently than all other agents. By the way, do fearless agents do business completely differently? Absolutely. Every single thing is different than what they were expecting, what they've seen before, what they're used to. And it virtually guarantees them. In fact, it actually does guarantee them. It virtually guarantees them of two things, and it's the two things that every seller wants. They want their house to sell, and they want to end up with more money after all the expenses are paid by a lot than they could get any other way. And then you say, would you say that's definitely what you're looking for? And everybody magically says yes. So think about the different types of uh, people that we have to prospect or customers. So we've got Cold calling, which is like calling up and down the street, you know, in, in, through neighborhoods. We've got investors, people that uh, – and when I talk about investors, I'm not talking about fix and flip people. I'm talking about real people with real money that know they need a realtor, buy and hold. Uh, we've got calling your database, your your sphere of influence, asking for referrals, calling expireds. 
and canceled listings and then for sale by owners. So that's the uh, that's the basis of what we do. So let's just talk about the for sale by owner, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, if you think about it, uh, what percentage of the sellers that will pay a commission to a real estate professional next week, next month, next year – were ever for sale by owner or were ever expired with another agent? And the answer is it's probably about 8%. Yeah. So it's a very small percentage. But if you look on the interwebs, you know, the uh, the interwebs, you've seen the this interwebs? Thing, the what interwebs? are interwebs? Yeah. Uh, you see all these YouTube videos of these knuckleheads constantly ca- calling for sale by owners and expireds. And the reason for that is because it's boring to watch people cold call uh, down the street through neighborhoods. But the reality is it's a small portion, but it is the low-hanging fruit. So if I said to you, hey, let's go through your neighborhood, any neighborhood, the neighborhood where you live, on average – well, I'll ask you this, Patty. In a a typical neighborhood near you uh, or your own neighborhood, how many doors on average would you have to knock on to find one person thinking about selling their house right now or in the very near future? What would you guess? How many would I have to knock on? Yeah, on average, how many doors? A uh, couple hundred. Okay. So you you guys have a different number. Whatever it is, you're right. Now, how many for sale by owner doors would you have to knock on, Patty, to find one person thinking about selling their house right now? Oh, just one. Yeah. Okay. So the odds are greatly improved. Yeah, of course. Yes, of course. But the trouble is uh, some of them are mean. Yes. Yeah. And some of them are not nice, not sane, not smart. Uh, they Some of them don't have a lot of equity to pay us with. Some of them uh, are not really that serious about selling their house right now at fair market value or thereabouts. But you know what? That's true of the general population, mm-hmm. too. I used to be afraid of them. Well, you know, these are unwarranted yeah. fears now exactly. that you're a fearless Absolutely. agent. Of course you're I not afraid. It's afraid. fearless agent. Yes. Right? That's, That's the name mean. of the company. We take that away. <laughs> so, So what is it that I was taught when I was brand new? In real estate. So I would go to all these uh, classes and they would say, hey, Bob, here's what you say to a for sale by owner. I'd be writing down the notes, you know. And then I would go up to whoever the instructor was. Normally it's a manager or somebody at a real estate company. And I would say, hey, uh, I'm curious. When you said that to the for sale by owner, because uh, I'm trying to think of what the for sale by owner would say, uh, what, what did they say, you know? And Every time the person who was teaching the class said, you know, uh, I pretty much worked my sphere of influence. I pretty much work referrals. And I realized the people that were training me had never done it. Mm-hmm. They had just heard this crap from somebody else and they're just re- repackaging it. So I want you to know that when I tell you this, I said it. It works every time. So here's here's what we teach our fearless agents to say. First of all, you're, you're going to call them up and you're going to say, hi. I could say, hi, is this Patty? Yes, this is Patty. Hi, Patty. Uh, my name is Bob Leffler. I'm a real estate agent with a company called Fearless Agent. And uh, I'm calling because my records indicate that your house is for sale by owner. Is that true? Yes, it is. Okay. Now, my records indicate gets Patty off her game because the difference between real estate agents and for sale by owners is one thing. The for sale by owner have their scripts memorized, don't they? <laughs> they said do. the same thing to hundreds of real estate agents. So I got to say or have her say, oh, uh, you know, records, what records? So she says yes. And I say, by the way, uh, does your house have a larger than normal family room or a separate family room from the living room. And I just want to ask her some question that is not uh, advertised in her ad probably, or she'd have to kind of look up and go, ah, oh, well, you know, and that's just a little trick to keep her on the phone. So I want her to not hang up on me immediately and go into her little memorized stick. And I say, well, I just, you know, the main thing that I want, that I want every for sale by owner to know is that I do business completely differently. So I've, I've, got, I've got to get to that. I say, you know, you're trying to sell your house by not having it on the market with a real estate professional. Is that because you hate realtors, Patty? Of course not. No? So you don't hate realtors? No, I don't hate realtors. What in the world would the reason be then? 
I'm trying to save money. Okay, so it's I'm about money. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I want it to be about money. So let me let me ask you this, Patty. If I have an amazing strategy, which I do, and no other agent has it, and I already know you know they don't, and it would absolutely guarantee you 1,000% that the buyer would grossly overpay for your house, and they'd be happy they did, and you would end up with tens of thousands of extra dollars more net after all the expenses are paid, more than you could get by doing it for sale by owner, more than you could get with the second best realtor by far, would you want to hear about it or are you allergic to money? (laughs) I'd like to hear about it. Okay. Now, most for sale by owners, I call that the magic question that works every time because they like that rather than falling into lava, right? right? We covered that. So they answer a question I didn't ask. Okay. Now, if you've ever been married, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Like I will ask my wife, uh, where would you like to go to dinner? And she'll say, well, it's 7 o'clock. <laughs> okay. Well, that, that makes sense in some universe, I guess. I, I don't know what that's all about. It's just question. a marriage thing. Yeah. I should have I said, honey, what time is it? She'd say Applebee's. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know what that is. But the Fizbos are like that. They're always answering some question you didn't ask. So you might have to repeat the, fear, the fearless agent magic question a different way or something three times if you have to to get that answered. But if you do get it answered, you're always going to book mm-hmm. the appointment. So that's what fearless agent really is all about is not asking stupid questions that the industry has taught us to say, always asking smart questions, always getting your question answered in every situation, and then you will always book the appointment. So the secret to booking five listing appointments a week is this start every day calling your sphere then go which is probably going to be one call two call no calls per day on average unless your sphere is huge then go to any new for sale by owners then go to any new expireds or canceled then go to follow-up calls from previous cold calling and that's where the real money gets made in real estate that's where the big bucks are going to get made And then spend the rest of the day cold calling, filling up your pipeline for future follow-up calls because the right now money in real estate comes from these things. It comes from calling your sphere, calling FISBOs, calling expireds and cancels, follow-up calls and cold calls and open houses. That's where the right now appointments and money come from. But where is your future going to be built. Your future will be entirely built on cold calls and your sphere. So if you want to have no future in an okay right now, then focus on FISBOs and expireds only. Uh, If you want to have a bright future and no right now, focus on cold calling uh, and your sphere. But if you want to have a, a, a very profitable right now and future, then make sure you're doing all of those and doing them in the right order, and that's going to make everything uh, uh, go well for you. So uh, once again, I want to thank Patty for joining us today. Thank you very much for being with us. And uh, please do visit us at fearlessagent.com. You can call me directly at 480-385-8810. You can always visit us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Dillard's Department Store. Where are we? We're in every Circle K. We're at a convenience store near you. We're everywhere you look. And until next week, just remember, always, always, Patty, have fun. What's number two? Be humble. Don't get all full of yourself out there. And until next week, most of all, be fearless. Bye-bye. All right.